So good morning, everyone, and welcome. Very nice seeing you all. We will be having a presentation, as you well know, you being here, about professional qualifications and the career path it can give you. I'm Georgia Cortis. I'm a director at Global Training. And on my side Hello, here, on my left, is Odysseus Christodoulou, our CEO. Hello, everyone. Good so morning. we're going to start off um, our discussion with saying a few words of who we are. And then I'm going to invite on my stage my panelists, and they can give you more of an insight about what it is being a professional accountant. Odyssey? Well, good morning again. It's a pleasure to have you here all today. We are uh, very excited that uh, the first career expo in Cyprus is organized uh, in collaboration uh, with uh, the University of Nicosia um, and, of course, Global Training being a part of the University of Nicosia, we would like to participate actively, not only as uh, exhibitors, but also as uh, trainers and educators. So we have decided to give this presentation and uh, to invite students and parents and uh, people from the profession uh, to talk about uh, employment and, of course, to look at the career options and why professional education is becoming uh, a trend which links the profession and the universities. So we believe that the Career Expo is going to bridge the gap between employers and employees, and we have an active role to play as a training organization. So, Georgia? Yeah, what's well, that? Moving forward, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the opportunities offered in the accounting profession and the financial sector in general and how students should plan their studies. And of course, one major objective that we see uh, through this uh, presentation is to understand the benefit of studying and training at the same time. This has been the trend in the accounting profession for generations. And uh, of course, uh, as Global Training, we were involved uh, with uh, training, accounting training schemes since 1991, when we started uh, in Cyprus as a professional training organization. And of course now, with presence overseas, we have managed to link academia with the financial sector. So we're really excited about this uh, opportunity. We're going to talk together with our panelists today uh, as to the benefits of, uh, of uh, undertaking this route, of going through this route, of undertaking this kind of uh, training. And, of course, uh, we uh, believe that uh, uh, all of the prospective uh, trainees who would be interested to um, undertake this kind of training would benefit the most and will try to guide them through to be their mentors in their uh, route to successful career. So. Okay. What do we have here? I would like to say that uh, as Global Training, we have more than 25 years of experience. We have started back in 1991, as I said. We have now presence in Greece, Romania, and also we do training in other countries on a fly-in, fly-out basis. We simply train uh, clients, uh, big international companies, uh, for various qualifications, accounting qualifications, and not only. Uh, we have a number of uh, tutors uh, who reside not only in Cyprus, but also overseas. As you can see, our centers in Greece, Cyprus, Romania, 
are uh, now uh, independent in terms of uh, academic staff because we have not only professionals working with us from the various countries, but also most of these people are ex-graduates from Global Training, which is a great success for us. And there are people who had the opportunity to train with us, to work with clients of us, and therefore we consider them the best representatives uh, of Global Training. Now, I would like to say that in the last four to five years, we have managed to develop a, a live online platform. And uh, this online platform is our window to the rest of the world. We have trainees and students studying with us from all over the world. This, is, this has become um, our new strategy for expansion. And as you very well know, this is uh, give, this is uh, for most of the training organizations and universities now, the new trend in uh, attracting students and educating students from all over the world. Now, I don't want to spend much time talking about us and who we are, because we'll have the chance at, uh, at a later stage to say a lot more. Uh, I just want to say that our vision and our strategy is to accelerate students' career. We want to widen and accelerate your career. This is the best way forward. Uh, we want to give you the opportunity to be on an, in, on an internship scheme or on employment, even while pursuing your studies. Uh, and uh, by combining study and work, it will give you the maximum benefit for a successful career in the future. Okay, Georgia, so Thank you, this let's says. go to our panelists. <laughs> right, um, so you, um, let's now meet our panelists, um, where everyone, I think, is looking forward for that. I have to thank all three of them today for being here. It's three people that I highly respect myself, and um, I've met recently in very different um, occasions in each, and I'd like um, to introduce them to you. We've got um, Andreas Stavro, Yanis Betemeridis, and Katerina Michelidou. Andreas is currently at the Hellenic Bank, and uh, he's a qualified accountant himself. He's got an extremely interesting career path, uh, and I'm let him continue from here. Andrea. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Well, good morning. It's a real pleasure to be with my friends from Global Tra Training on this Sunday morning. Uh, I really look forward to our discussion, and I hope I can contribute something interesting in today's panel. So, thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Andreas. Next is Yannis Pitemeridis. Yannis is um, a statutory auditor. He's more involved as a compliance advisor. I'm going to tell you all about compliance as we go through this presentation, which is a newer area where professional accountants can widen their careers. It's a very, um, but again, something you're going to tell us as well, Yanni, was a very growing area with many opportunities for you guys. Yanni, a few things about yourself. Yes, hello. My name is uh, Yanni Petsemeridis. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for inviting me today. It pleasure. would be a pleasure to be part of your panel and looking forward to discuss with all of you whatever you would like to ask. Thank, thank you. you. And last but yes. not least is the lady or the ladies in <laughs> with us. We've got Caterina Michelidou. And Caterina is actually one of the newer members. And she's currently studying to become a qualified accountant with a very interesting career path since she was in classic studies, ancient drama. But now she's moved forward and she's come to us, us being a qualified accountants. Um, studying towards becoming a qualified accountant, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about how she sees things, how she, is she enjoying it, is she enjoying <coughs> how difficult it is. So, Katerina, a little bit about yourself, where you um, are. Okay, good morning. Um, thank you for inviting me in this career event. I hope that you will enjoy our presentation. Um, for those who are wondering, I'm not fat, I'm just pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said the ladies. Another one here. It's her first okay. presentation, isn't it? 
Hair first, yeah. yes. <laughs> first. Um, okay, uh, I don't know. Okay, Do so KPMG audit department, we're going to say a bit more okay. later on. Okay. Thank you. Um, as I said, she's becoming a qualified accountant, so she's going to tell those of you who are interested in becoming one, what's it like going through this process? What are the challenges of the work? What are the opportunities of this work? So I'm going to start off. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I'm going to explain a little bit about what type of professional qualifications there are as options being in this particular area. So many, many of you may know um, the ACA and the ACCA program. So a chartered accountant and a certified accountant. Now, they're both very similar in the context and the type of things they have to do, but many of us, sometimes they come to us and they tell us, so what is the difference? Should I become a chartered accountant or should I become a certified accountant? And as my um, colleague Avram Hajihannas tends to always say, it's like, it's the same thing. It's like comparing a Mercedes with a BMW. Okay? It depends on your personal requirements. It depends on how you would want to see your path. So some of the difference that I can point out is that the mode of delivery may be different or the flexibility it offers may be different. But in terms of career opportunities and career paths, they're very similar in what they give. Okay? So just to give you an overview, if you are looking into becoming an ACA member, what we call a chartered accountant, the path is 15 courses, and you may get anything between 0 to 12 exemptions from your previous studies. Okay? So you may be accelerating your path towards the ACA by taking relevant degrees that may offer these exemptions. Okay? Now, as you see up there, becoming a qualified accountant, some of us may think, I'm just going to do accounting. It's not the case. Okay? When you become a qualified accountant, you're going to have a vast um, areas that you'll be examining. Okay? You're going to have taxation, you're going to have finance, you're going to have um, strategy, you're going to have financial management, anything that you may need to get you into the business world wherever that may lead you. And in a similar manner, the ACCA has similar structure with accountancy, taxation, law papers, management, um, strategy, and they're all leading towards becoming a qualified accountant, which is a highly respected qualification to have on your CV, guys. And I think it's something that uh, I can ask my panelists to also give us some understanding of how they feel about this and how their uh, experience as students has helped them contribute into their career paths as they are. So should I start with Andreas? Andreas, um, being a qualified accountant yourself, how do you feel that that ACA on your CV was seen by your employees when you started off your career? Well, uh, yeah, yeah um, I've, I've been very lucky with my career up to now because uh, I've had um, I've had eight jobs up to now in my career. Uh, this gets misunderstood that I've been fired eight times, which is not the case. I've chosen to have eight different jobs. Um, and um, if I may just say why I chose to do it in, in the first place, uh, well, I have to be honest with you, that I was heavily influenced by, by my environment. My father was a chartered accountant. I had friends and family who were chartered accountants. I could see that everyone was... Uh, having a pretty good career, so that was quite attractive to me. Um, additionally, and I don't know if there are any parents in the room, uh, I, one of the reasons I wanted to become a child accountant is because it got, got me off the payroll of my parents immediately. So after I did my degree, uh, it gave me the, an independency that I wanted to, to have. So I had my own income and uh, I could do whatever I wanted to. So I did my child accountancy in London, uh, with Coopers and Library at the time, PricewaterhouseCoopers. So that was an excellent experience. And what, what actually Charter Council brought to, to the table for me is that immediately out, out of university, you have a, a vast um, exposure to a lot of things. Um, I was lucky enough to do it in London, in England. So uh, I worked for a lot of companies, and I'm sure Katharina will also tell us the, 
the relevant experience in, in Cyprus. So uh, while you're studying and you're learning and you're, you're uh, building your technical skills, you're also building your business knowledge because you, you go to various clients, uh, you see different industries, di different skill sets. Um, and, and this is something that as you go along, you build this portfolio which, uh, you, which travels with you along your career. And this is what's helped me along my career to do uh, a lot of different roles. Uh, one of the things in my career is that really none of my, none of my roles have been the same. So I've been able to change. I've, I've had roles as a CFO, I've had roles as a uh, credit analyst, I've had roles uh, in compliance, and Yanis might talk about compliance a little bit further down. And currently I'm uh, probably in a role which brings all this together, which is head of uh, the transformation office in Hellenic Bank, which is basically um, uh, seeing through the strategy of the bank and how to manage change. So how has uh, the ACA helped me with this? It, it's it's uh, allowed me to build that skill set on which you have to build them because you know, it, it's a qualification. It, it, it won't bring you everything on its own, but it's a very important building block on which to build your career. Yeah. So. It's very interesting what you said um, because um, you said um, I started my career in the profession and what you have said is I was very lucky because I was able to see so many types of industries and so many different things. I think looking back at my career path, I really value it moving forward because you really are very fortunate uh, being in the profession, seeing different companies, their systems, the, the governance, and, and as you said, it all sort of sinks in yes. and it's used in your later profession. Yes. Yes. And it's interesting how you see patterns again and again, even mm -hmm. though you're in different industries, you'll see things again and again. So a company yeah. has to be profitable, all right? So you, you need to have a, a, a good uh, a skill, uh, skill labor force yes. to help you do that. So whatever, wherever you go, you see the themes coming up again and, and again. And you can start understanding strengths exactly. and weaknesses, what should be done, what should it be exactly. done at a very exactly. early age, which I think that's, that's something which you don't have in other industries. Mm -hmm. Um, starting forward. Um, so we were gonna, I'm going to also show you, we've got, besides being an ACCA and an ACA, there are other qualifications you can also use. You can either use them as a top-up course after your ACA and your ACCA, or go directly into them. <laughs> Things like international taxation, where you all know because of globalization, it's more and more important now to ensure that anything you decide to do as a tax planning in Cyprus, say, may have an impact in the UK where you have also operations, or it could have an impact in, in the States or in Russia. So it's very important looking at all this international taxation aspect. CIA internal auditing, so how to have a role perhaps in a big organization, look at their system, look at their weaknesses, fraud risks, Moving on to the CFE, also as other publications, the CFA. So there's a vast um, amount of qualifications. You can have options into studying and being in this career. Um, I'm going to pass the, uh, the line to, for Yanis Petemeri. It is Yanis, besides being a qualified accountant and ACA member, is also involved in other qualifications like the CIA and the CFE. Uh, Yanis, can you tell us a little bit more about your, how you started off in the profession and how you decided to also specialize in these uh, different areas of the profession. Okay, thank you, Yoria. Now, in my case, I'm not coming from a charter accountant's family. I'm coming from an army officer's family, <laughs> who is a little bit different. Now, I am I qualified as a charter accountant and I have been a member of the Institute of Charter Accountants since 2005. So it has been a while. Uh, most of my career has been spent in PricewaterhouseCoopers. Half of it, PricewaterhouseCoopers London, where I used to be a manager in the audit of uh, investment insurance and banks. And uh, the other half in PricewaterhouseCoopers, Cyprus, again in the audit of financial services companies. Um, over the last three years, I, I have been freelancing, 
And um, I have followed something that maybe look as a different career path being compliance, but actually it's no different. A lot of people, when they hear about the ACCA or the ACA, they mostly believe it's about numbers, about uh, reading numbers, about adding numbers, about confirming numbers. But that's just a very small part of what these qualifications are all about. These qualifications is about maturing you as a, as a professional. It's about developing your analytical skills, your way of thinking, your, your problem-solving mentality, your problem-solving techniques. So although most of my career has been spent on what everyone expects from a qualified accountant being in an audit firm, in the last three years, it has helped me to concentrate and focus in general compliance, compliance being around uh, MIFID, from who you know it about investment companies, or uh, uh, anti-money laundering, which has been a big thing in Cyprus for the last five years, or forensic accounting, again, a skill that is on high demand currently in Cyprus. So I strongly believe that my qualification and my expertise, my development has helped me to follow a slightly different path. Yes, it is very interesting. So you used the ACA as um, the first, part, as first block, let's say, and you built on that and moved into a more specialized area, which is another fantastic um, advantage of becoming a qualified accountant. <coughs> you don't restrict yourself into doing one particular thing. It allows you to use whatever you think is best for you and specialize in that particular area, which I think is fantastic. Um, so moving on, we have, um, why obtain a professional qualification? So obviously, it's something which is recognized globally. Um, Andreas mentioned earlier, he did his um, work, um, his qualification in the UK. And I'm sure if you were to get a job somewhere else in the world, the fact that you did this qualification would have still been the passport, as we say many times, to get you through the route. Is that correct? Yeah, you you are, hello. You actually took the word out of my mouth. It's like a passport. It, it is really a passport. is. Uh, um, I, I, I worked in London for um, eight years, and moving uh, into different companies in different roles was pretty easy because you, you, you have that passport with you, which opens a lot of doors. It's not everything, okay, but it opens the doors for yes. sure. Um, I have to be honest that uh, working in Greece was a little bit of a different experience because even though there is a big Cyprus uh, business community in, in Greece, the concept was not quite as well grasped, but I understand that that has changed over the last few years, and I know that a lot of the good work that you've been doing in Greece mm -hmm. has helped in that. So, uh, and coming to Cyprus was a, was a no-brainer, really, because uh, it's, you know, half of Cypriots are accountants, so yes. you don't need to explain to people what a charter accountancy is. So I absolutely agree with you that uh, doing the ACA acts as a passport wherever you go in the world, then they know that they have a minimum level of mm -hmm. uh, skill set and quality, and from there on you go and build what, whatever else, uh, other experience and, and other things you bring to the table. Sure. Absolutely agree with you. It also allows you to obtain a specialization in, in an area which interests you most. Now, I've mentioned earlier, I mean, and Andreas also said, um, you know, it's not about accounting, it's not about just the numbers, it's also looking further. So it gives you a wide and a broad range of things you could do with this. And I think um, Yannis is, is, uh, is an example, having had an area where he's specializing in, in compliance, in forensics. I'm mentioning forensics, so what is forensics? Because many of the people here, it's something new, I think, to the industry, this word. Um, it's something which surely might interest a lot of people. So can you tell us a bit more about what is forensics? Forensics primarily has a different um, 
uh, user, let's say, although the statutory audit is primarily addressed to the board of directors and the shareholders, usually with forensic is about building evidence for a court. It can be a, a civil case, an economic disagreement between uh, two parties. It can be a criminal investigation with regards to some uh, fraud or uh, embezzlement or uh, tax evasion that may be led to the court. Uh, I, have, I have having this role in both in the criminal and the civil cases. The scope is significantly different. You don't have the, as we call it in the statutory audit, the so-called reasonable assurance or uh, true and fair. In the court, it's a little bit different. In the court, you need to present everything, solid evidence has to be able to support your case. And of course, uh, having a judge that usually does not have any understanding about accounting, it's a very big challenge. It need, it, you need that communication skills mm. that my career and my qualification has helped me develop to present what I want to say in very uh, simple uh, yes. way. Now, in this respect, I just to mention, I'm also the chairman of the Economic Crime and Forensic Accounting Committee of, of ISPAC, the accounting regulator. And I'm also uh, have been working until recently coming from my forensic accounting experience as an external technical advisor on the AML department of the Cyprus Securities and Exchange Commission, performing a number of audits on behalf of the Audit General of the Republic. And now recently, I'm also doing some training on a volunteer basis for the Cyprus Police, the Department of Economic Crime. Oh, that is very interesting. So they're getting trained as well in the police department on economic crime. Yeah. It is an area which is... So, yeah, uh, I, I want to comment something mm -hmm. on what you said, uh, Yannis. Uh, this very specialized uh, uh, area that uh, you have just uh, explained shows what are the many possible options, career options, that an accounting qualification uh, offers to our students and trainees. So if I refer to the more than 5,000 accountants that have qualified with us, in, uh, in Cyprus, Greece, and Romania, where we operate the last 25 years or so, I can tell you that only maybe 10% of those who work in the accounting practice, in the audit firms, in other words, mm -hmm. the rest of those graduates, of those qualified accountants, work in any area of the industry, from government, from the income tax, VAT, the treasury of the government, to insurance companies, banks, uh, all sorts of, uh, of jobs in, in any other industry. Education. Education. Uh, <laughs> we were the ones uh, who, uh, who have made the decision at a very early stage in our career to change mm -hmm. uh, from the profession. I was in the accounting profession at that time uh, with Coopers and Libra, and I thought that this could become an excellent uh, business, let's say, opportunity. This is how we view things at that time. And so we have decided to switch to education in an effort to help the industry and the account profession. But uh, then we realized that this was such an exciting career. Uh, which uh, has, uh, we have started part-time teaching at the beginning. Uh, so we are part-timers for a year or so. And then uh, we thought this could become a full-time job. And uh, in the end, we realized that we could play an important role in, 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 in developing further and shaping the accounting training and the profession in general in Cyprus. And this has led us at the later stage to more ambitious plans to move on to Greece and to Romania and to other countries. So I'm just giving you this as an example 
to understand what are the possible career paths and the possible options that these particular qualifications can offer to our students, to our children. It's a plea that we don't have many people here today. We don't have students from high schools and from universities to listen to us because I use this as a, as a joke usually, not just as an example. Whenever somebody is uh, coming for an advice to global training, the chances of not registering are almost close to zero. So it is uh, uh, such an exciting career and it is so convincing that you can start this career and then you can move on to any industry, to any profession you may choose. And it's not a coincidence that uh, most of the top uh, management uh, positions and CEOs in uh, international companies and uh, many companies which are listed in the stock exchange are held by chartered accountants and uh, certified accountants. So we have seen this uh, for years now, for generations now, uh, happening and uh, we believe that we can help our students, we can give them the right uh, career uh, option uh, which can become the starting point for their future success. Yeah, so true. And I'll add on something you've said, I mean you've said uh, there may be almost zero chances of them registering to any of our courses. And I, would, I could also very genuinely and boldly say there are almost zero chances of not being employed uh, just because of all these options that Odysseus has mentioned, which brings me to my next point, enjoying more opportunities. It will give you genuinely more opportunities. And I will... Sure. Can I interrupt for a minute? Mm -hmm. I want to say also that we have started training Chartered and Certified Accountants since 1991 in Cyprus. I remember at that time we had approximately 500 qualified accountants registered with the Institute of Certified Public Accountants in Cyprus. And when we first uh, uh, started, I remember many colleagues telling me uh, this is not a good idea because you may, we may end up with so many accountants in the country that we will be a, we will be unemployed. And uh, I have tried to convince them that this is not the case. To the contrary, we strongly believe it will help the industry expand further. It will help the industry grow. And this is exactly what has happened. Nowadays, with more than six or 7,000, I cannot really give you the exact number, uh, we'll see it in a qualified while. accountants yeah. in Cyprus, we have a, a scarcity. We have employers calling us, asking for uh, trainees, asking for newly graduates, and we don't have enough people to recommend them. So this is uh, such an exciting career option that nobody can ignore. And it is, it, is, it is not a coincidence that we attract students who have studied in their first degree something totally non-relevant to the financial sector. We have, they have studied engineering, they did uh, anything but accounting and finance. We have people who did, uh, we even had somebody who became a pilot and then he decided to switch to accounting, somebody who did a PhD in psychology, in music, anything. So this is not a coincidence. So this is why we're here today, to give you uh, this golden advice of not ignoring this career option. So, Which yeah. brings us to Katerina, being one of the examples you've Hi, mentioned, Hello. <laughs> um, who has a completely different background, uh, starting off from classical studies, ancient drama, is yes. that correct? What was it that got you into to our doorstep? <laughs> I did not ignore the career option. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I, I come from a completely different background. Um, this is not something exceptional because there are 
a lot of many other students uh, and ACA trainees uh, who come from uh, many other backgrounds apart from accountancy and um, economics, for example. I, I can see two of them, for example, here. Yes. <laughs> Theology and law. law. So um, I studied Greek philology in Athens, and then I went to the University of Oxford to do my master's degree in Greek and Latin languages and literature. And then um, I went to London, uh, University College London, to do my PhD thesis there on ancient Greek religion and um, drama, tragedy comedy. So uh, wh while I was doing my PhD, I was teaching at the University uh, College London. Uh, I was teaching Latin. Then I came back here and for two years. I was employed. I was a part-timer, actually. I was teaching assistant uh, at the University of Cyprus, and then uh, at the same time at the Open University of Cyprus. Uh, where I taught uh, ancient Greek, Greek comedy, etc. So nothing to do with accounting. And then all of a sudden, um, I decided to switch to the ACA, do something completely different. So what made me take this big decision? Um, first of all, one main reason was the fact that, as I, as I told you, I was a part-timer at the university. My dream was to, to pursue an academic career, of course, uh, but the conditions of my employment were not the ideal ones. So um, uh, I didn't have, for example, I have two children, that's my third, and I didn't have maternity leave. I had to reapply to get the position twice per year. I was unpaid during summer. So I knew that this was not something that could continue forever, especially if you have a family. So while I was, although I was enjoying what I was, what I was doing, um, I knew that it wasn't permanent. Uh, it was something temporary. And there were no prospects in Cyprus. And I had to stay in Cyprus because I was married here, etc. cetera. Um, so a friend of mine who is an ACA uh, accountant, and uh, he's, work, he's a manager at KPMG, uh, told me, why, why aren't you doing an ACA? And I said, what? Why? How? How can I do it? And he said, well, that's not unreasonable, because there are many other students like you, many other people like, like you, uh, who do the ACA, and although they know nothing about accounting. And then he explained to me a few things about what an ACA is, uh, what an auditor do, does, um, and uh, the career opportunities that this qualification uh, can offer to me. And I said, okay, why not? So I applied to KPMG. They accepted my uh, application. They offered me a position. And uh, it was September 2016 when I first started uh, the ACA qualification. Um, I have already passed 12 out of 15 modules. I have three more to go. Um, um, I'm sitting the two advanced together in July because I'm giving birth in August. Uh, so I have to speed up <laughs> the process. Um, and then I'll do the case study next summer. And I, I hope that by then I'll be qualified. So one of the reasons I did it was because I was disappointed uh, with um, with the employment conditions that I had before. Another reason, um, and I think that that was the main reason, because you know, when I, I was disappointed and then I was thinking about different options that I had, um, I was thinking about doing uh, an MBA, for example, or something on HR, uh, but I think that the ACA qualification is the one that opens up a lot of different career uh, opportunities. So prospects um, were the reasons why I did it. Mm -hmm. And I think that the most important thing is that I don't regret it. Yeah, which is obviously <laughs> the most important thing, coming from a, such a different background. Do you enjoy what you do? Do you actually enjoy the work and the engagements that you do? Do you feel that you're learning? Do you feel that you're building on your professional development? Yes. Um, some, some people who work in the audit departments, 
not only at KPMG, in uh, every other firm, uh, tend to say, well, it's something monotonous, it's something boring. It's not for me. I'm learning every day new things. Uh, it can be monotonous, it can become monotonous if you do things mechanically. So if you just do what others have done, uh, then yes, of course, you, you, you don't think, you just uh, execute. Uh, but audit can be a really challenging um, experience. I think that what, what uh, challenges me more is the fact that we have variety and diversity. There is no routine. Mm -hmm. um, and this is because we have big clients. I'm very lucky. Uh, I'm, I'm working for a partner who has um, uh, insurance companies, uh, banks, investment companies, advertisement companies. So we have a very diverse, diversified portfolio. Uh, and that's really challenging for me because I, I have to deal with many different clients and industries. So uh, every, t every project for me is, um, is, a, is, a pra is, a, is a new knowledge and it gives me new skills. Um, so I think that audit uh, can become interesting if you really put effort, if you um, think before you do it. Um, and if you appreciate all these uh, opportunities that it can offer to you, and the networking, of course. Of course, yes. Andreas, anything that you can share with us in terms of um, you know, any experience you've had that's important and meaningful work, which uh, you could not have done without having these um, qualifications? I think there's a recurring theme here that uh, this is not about numbers. Yeah. Okay. It's not about being good at uh, balancing a balance sheet or doing double entry or stuff like that. Uh, I was never good at that, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, it, it, it's uh, and, and I find this a lot also when I'm um, when I'm interviewing people in, in the bank. Um, it, it's about bringing uh, bringing to the table things that. Uh, are not purely technical. So uh, I find uh, that when I'm, uh, when I'm interviewing people who have qualified as a chartered accountant, they, they, they bring a confidence to the table, okay? They bring a confidence that they've covered the technical areas and that they, um, that they have more experience than that. Um, and I'd like also to, uh, to say to, to, to the younger people who are starting their career, because we hear a lot about the labor uh, market changing a lot, and even in these very, very interesting um, seminars that we hear in life-changing experiences, people saying, uh, I think it was a month ago, people saying that, you know, I, I pity accountants because artificial intelligence is going to do everything, and the uh, lawyers will be unemployed and accountants will be unemployed. Well, only, um, only about two weeks ago, maybe even last week, I read an interview by El Elon Musk Elon of Musk. Tesla, who's having some problems with his uh, car manufacturing business. And it was very important what he said. He said, human intelligence is underrated. <laughs> Good one. I found that because he tried to say, you know, everything's art he tried to do the, the most sophisticated artificial intelligent robotic uh, um, uh, factor in the world, and it didn't work. And uh, I think this is the important thing that the younger people who are starting their careers, okay, I'm not 25 years old anymore, and we hear a lot about millennials, and we hear a lot about uh, how the labor environment is going to change, and there's going to be a lot of flexibility and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, if you work in a bank, okay, there's a lot of interesting things happening in banks now with the digital transformation and all that stuff. But at the same time, you know, you need to work in a structured environment, okay? You need, you have to, you have your various departments. You have to have the communication, organizational structures, etc. Et so I find that uh, the, the Charter Accountancy qualification is, is a good mix of things. So it can give you the ammunition to specialize in something but it also gives you the flexibility in, this, in these uncertain times where the labor market is changing to have a lot of uh, different skill sets and experiences that you can bring to the fore. So I think that that's very, very important. And, and which brings exactly what I have next on my slide, and flexibility if, and transfer and if I, skills. And if I may, yeah. as I said, and I, I apologize for, <coughs> for uh, repeating, so 
I've done many, many different things, okay? And the transition has been almost seamless. Of course, there is a big learning curve, but that's something that I, I, I enjoy. Uh, continuously development. And if someone wants to continuously develop, then this is definitely an option that they should consider. So, thank you. And obviously, what you're saying is also this will enhance your long-term prospects. I think everyone here sort of um, agrees on this one. Now, besides the technical experience and the qualities and whatever we've discussed so far, I think one thing that I think everyone here will agree is the professional development that you go through by going into this um, um, ladder, the career ladder. Uh, because the way we work, the way the professional qualifications work, the fact that you have to um, study and work at the same time and your work can be quite challenging will um, equip you with much more than technical skills and the skills that you will need in progressing. I mean, how can you be able to progress if you can't sit in front of the table and negotiate? Mm. It will help you get there. How can you um, progress in your career ladder if you haven't learned how to work in teams? It will get you there. Um, all these things, that problem solving, technical competence, Odysseus, do you, do you agree on what I'm saying? I mean, being the person who's um, seen most of our I definitely qualification, agree. yes. And, uh, of course, these are the important ingredients that help people who become accountants to be able to adapt and to be able to work in almost every industry and in every profession. Uh, becoming an accountant is not, is not just about being good with numbers. This is, I believe, a very small fraction of what you actually do at work. Uh, you become a business-minded person. You become an entrepreneurial-minded person. You learn how to cope with uh, deadlines, how to uh, handle with uh, a lot of infor how, to, how to handle a lot of information. It's a test of your capacity at some stage in learning, and uh, this can uh, make you uh, really uh, able to handle uh, difficult and complex scenarios at work. That is why we see people who. Uh, became accountants who are uh, now in the profession, and they can become consultants of, al of almost every different um, industry. And the, the decision-making factor usually, whenever you are faced with a problem, uh, comes down to assessing and evaluating its financial viability. <clears throat> and not only that, in uh, making the right decision whether you should uh, uh, go ahead with a certain project or not. So this is why I believe uh, it is not a coincidence. It is uh, uh, something that uh, has been proved several times in the past. <coughs> and uh, that is why every time we talk to a student, we talk to a trainee, we give them this golden advice of not really ignoring this option uh, in their career path and their studies. And it's something which um, the professional qualification bodies have seen that employers seek uh, more and more now, uh, given that it's more about uh, well, human intelligence, well, how did you say it? Yeah, human intelligence. Human intelligence and how to develop this human intelligence, yeah. knowing that this artificial intelligence is coming through. It's about becoming advisors, adding on the strategy of the business, uh, looking at the governance boards, um, thinking about how to develop further the business. And the, the syllabi of these professional qualifications have adapted. And this is um, the recently issued syllabi for the um, the strategic business leader of the ACCA, and you see there's no numbers in there. If you read in there, it's very little. It's all about um, looking at professional development things and how you put yourself in a business role and be able to um, suggest ideas on the table of um, negotiations. 
Now, moving on, I want to put a bit more um, information for you in regards to how many potential employers you may have by being in this profession, the career opportunities available, where it is that you could actually be employed, and finishing off with the new trends in the profession. Now, I've picked this slide from um, the ICPAC. So ICPAC is the body of accountants. And you can see that even in the 2013-15 era where we had the banking crisis, the numbers of students completing um, their studies was growing. And this growth is going even more recently. And knowing from information from the profession, um, the trend will continue. And I'm going to add what Odisea said, are there too many accountants? Well, there aren't yet too many accountants, and this you will see later with the amount of vacancies that are currently available, seeking people with this financial experience. Now, we use the term accountants. It's more than the accountants, I think. And of course, this is Georgiana, the number of members registered with the Institute ICPAC. of Certified Public yes, Accountants which of Cyprus. Which is uh, where I'm going to get, yeah. There are another maybe 3,000 who are not registered with ICPAC for the very simple reason that they work in certain sectors of, uh, of the economy, of, uh, in certain industries, that they don't really have to be a member of ICPAC to be able to practice mm -hmm. their profession. Uh, and that is the reason. Another point which I wanted to, um, seeing many ladies in the room as well, the gender. I mean, it still seems that it's more men dominated, but by looking at my classes now, I think the ratio is slightly changing. And I think one of the big four had recently um, published that its ratio is actually changing. So it is an opportunity where, you know how many times we see that there's gender inequality in many businesses? I think this is not a case in our profession. Maybe Katerina can also, uh, do you feel that in any way being a woman would be a disadvantage to you in, uh, in the profession? Um, I'm not sure yet. You're not but sure I think, yet. Look, uh, to be honest, uh, other ACA trainees and ACCA trainees are half and half. Exactly. Um, yeah. But when it comes to managerial positions, yeah. there I think that it's a big difference because most, most women uh, prefer to switch to the banking sector, for example, okay. after they become qualified because the, the hours are better, the working conditions yeah. are, you know, th there, is, there isn't much pressure. Mm -hmm. So um, I some. think... Hmm? Uh, for some people <laughs> in the banking sector, the hours are better. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, Andreas will not agree with you. Yeah, I, I think sure. Andreas is going through a stressful time at his job. <laughs> um, <coughs> but surely it is an industry, I mean, even in the banking, I mean, becoming in this profession, it's much less evident, this gender inequality, than in anywhere else. That, that, I, that I've seen myself as well. Now, how many employers can you have? Now, this is only the ICPAC registered firms. So the, the firms that are employed in providing accountancy services. So only there, you have um, around seven, 750, over 750 firms. Now, this is only one area you could be employed in. We're gonna see later that there's also the Forex business, the, um, the compliance, which is an area that Yannis has decided to specialize in. So Yannis, having said the compliance and the SISEC regulator, do you have any numbers you can share with us as to how many companies currently are SISEC regulated and whether they would make use of professional accountants? Um, I, I see the numbers. I have seen these numbers before. Um, now, whether there is a requirement in Cyprus for uh, more people that uh, can uh, solve problems and add value, there will always be this demand. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can achieve that through the qualification that I can tell you, you can achieve this through the ACCA or the ACA qualification, uh, and the numbers will be increasing. Now, uh, where the industry is moving is moving into a consolidation. So I'm, uh, I'm sure in, uh, in a number of years, the. 89% of the small firms will be coming together because the, the industry currently has been so uh, bombarded with new regulation, compliance, etc., 
that uh, a consolidation is required as to be able to uh, handle these additional uh, requirements. Uh, now, regarding how these um, practitioners are uh, structured, I'm actually one of the 98, they are the sole <laughs> practitioners. So I'm in that category. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of yeah. course, Yannis, I would agree with you that there is a trend, a tendency towards consolidation of the industry that does not only re relate to the accounting profession, it's also relevant for the banking profession and, this, and also for some other companies in the financial services sector. And this has been the result, I believe, of the over-expansion of our economy in general, which has led to the so many problems of uh, the banking sector, with the resulting not performing loans. And uh, as a result, as you said, of the over-regulation, because uh, in an effort to monitor better this over-expansion in the end, we have ended up with over this over-regulation and that relates to compliance and uh, anti-money laundering, etc. Uh, we will see the financial sector uh, consolidating, but not necessarily um, uh, having a reduction in the, in the number of uh, members for our profession. Uh, it's shrinking. It's shrinking then. Not, not, not necessarily shrinking. shrinking. Yeah. Uh, this is an inevitable, I believe, uh, development, which long term will help the quality improve uh, of our services mm -hmm. and uh, maybe help uh, our uh, industry become more competitive in the international market. Mm -hmm. So by improving quality and through consolidation, we'll become better and more capable of competing with the big giants in the international market. I agree with you what he says. And coming from the financial sector, there's definitely there has been and there will be more consolidation. Um, and this is because we are playing with the same rules as Europe. We're a European country. And uh, if we look at just the numbers, that's, uh, that, that's the right thing, okay? Because we have all these, uh, all these issues uh, in Cyprus. But at the same time, the consolidation, I agree with what you're saying, is uh, bringing with it uh, quality, okay? Because uh, governance is a big issue. Uh, you, need to, you need to have the... Hello? Oh, there you yes. go, there. So we need to have the right people at the right position. So it's it's also an opportunity in the new uh, new way that things will uh, will be working in Cyprus. That uh, a lot of these positions will need to be sourced by people with a very strong uh, qualifications. Uh, the Indeed. European Central Bank is not joking around with this. I can tell you. So uh, it, it is a challenge. Okay, it's a threat, but it's also an opportunity as we did together in, uh, in business strategy, Katerina. So we have to see both sides of the coin. So Katerina shouldn't worry that she won't be able to get a, bank, a, a job in the bank. Well, <laughs> specifically Katerina, I don't worry about it at all, to be honest. Should I send an application? <laughs> Whenever you want. <laughs> um, all right, so... I mean, we've covered, I think, most of this. So potential areas of employment, I think you, you, most of you in this room must have understood it's not about being just in the profession. Although the profession can also widen your prospects, it's not only about audit. It could be audit, it could be risk management, it could be um, data analysis, it could be um, compliance. Since compliance is an area where um, Yannis has also mentioned earlier, uh, anti-money laundering. It's a huge area with many offices and um, employees required to deal with this. It's about the industry, so the banking industry. Um, it's about investment banks. It's about entrepreneurship. So it could be that we've got people that have finished their qualification, and after their experience in five, six, ten years, they've decided to do their own business. Some very successful businesses have come up um, from um, our, our students that uh, you potentially had also as, as your students as well. Indeed. 
Um, so it could be new ideas that they have thought of, or even old ideas, but with a twist. I mean, what, um, what the, can I think about that? I mean, it could be just someone selling, I don't know, cosmetics, but with a new global um, caution for environmentalism, it's cosmetics, but in unwrapped packages. It's the new thing now, isn't it? And no packaging, um, less environmental damages. So by having all this, what Andrea started off this morning saying, being bombarded with all this information about different companies, how they work, what works, what doesn't work, it will develop you into a very good entrepreneur should you want to um, decide to take this path. And if I may add, we mustn't discount the actual training itself, okay? We've been talking a lot yeah. about afterwards, but the actual training itself, and I've been lucky enough to work with you and um, do one of the modules of the Chartered Accountants, which is business strategy, mm -hmm. which has practically no numbers in it. And it's been a great experience for me personally because it's been a refresher to me, yeah. uh, being in the transformation office of Hellenic Bank, which is all about strategy, to go back to the theory and go and, and, and see all these things that are very, very important mm -hmm. in any business sector. And one, one of the areas which we go on a lot about which was actually not in the syllabus when I was doing it, not that much, was ethics. Okay, so you have a lot of things about ethics, you have a lot, uh, the consumer is much more sensitive, and w even within the, the various modules starting to become a chartered accountant, you learn a lot about these things that hopefully will be useful yeah. further on, and it's been very useful for me in my current role, I have uh, to say. And you reminded me, one day Andreas comes to my office and said, you know, I've been in this business for, 20 years, can I say? It's a bit too much. I don't know. Oh, it's around there. Yeah, around there. And <laughs> uh, by doing the business strategy course, I went back and, and, and I used it yes, in yes. my current role. And actually, I had the wow face of uh, people I work with. Yes. Like, so Suddenly, even, even everyone after... realized I knew what I was talking about after all these years. Yes. <laughs> because so I was doing this. You yes. were doing this. I found that very interesting. Now, um, I also took a snapshot. I tried to also show you guys of what could potentially be the prospect. What kind of salary ranges are we talking about? Well, your aim is obviously becoming CEOs, but not everyone in this room will become a CEO. Uh, so you can, but it will depend on the opportunities and how much you will grab the opportunities. So if I was going through anything from, you're going to start up from the range of 18 to 20,000, and it will escalate. And it's an area where, should you take the right opportunities, you will have advancement. And you'll have much faster advancement by working towards this qualification um, and getting the salary ranges which you'd like. So it could be from the profession, it could be from um, the industry, it could be from um, the banking itself. So it, it gives you an indication of where you should position yourself. Put yourself the target, work towards it, commit yourself, and you can um, get it. Now, knowing that also Rodotti is also one of our um, co-organizers in this career expo, I also check their website and see, okay, because I always hear, or I, I tend to hear a lot from people that I see, Will I have opportunities? Are there opportunities still in Cyprus, knowing that uh, more and more are becoming qualified? Well, I think this sort of proves the case without me having to say much. Well, I just put a highlight of where are the most vacancies currently, at least in this um, particular side. It doesn't mean that it could be anything different in other sites. Uh, I've got the forex industry, so you have to turn a bit to just read the numbers. 116 vacancies, I've got the business administration, 147 vacancies, accountants, 127 vacancies. Um, then we've got IT. Okay, IT is not a sector which, obviously, with what we've talked so far, you get specialized in. Um, although we've seen a lot of, it's a very combina good combination. People who have IT background moving into this profession. It's a very, very good combination. A law, with a professional qualification, and IT with a professional qualification. And there's also the, the Horeca um, people, people who might not know, it's the hotel restaurants catering. And then there's financial sector, another 96 positions. So one, two, three, four out of the six um, most highly, let's say, um, 
availability for vacancies are actually things that you can work towards in your careers by getting a professional qualification. But also, I mean, I don't want to stop with professional qualification, but also getting continuous professional development. I mean, one thing which uh, I've, I've, I've done my qualification almost 20 years now, and I don't think I should ever stop. If I stop getting trained, that will be a mistake for everyone because this change is happening. You have to continuously um, work towards it. I'm sure you've been doing a lot of reading lately with the AML and the money laundering. So every, what, every, it's been like the third time after 2013 that we're having significant changes with the money laundering registration. We are number four. Four. Voted in April and they're already discussing about the fifth directive. So it's always, you have to keep um, up to date with the new, with the new areas, which is a challenge um, and changing environment you have to keep up with. Um, so that will give you an idea of the areas you can be working in by becoming a qualified accountant. And I just um, looked at my LinkedIn account and just said, okay, so can I give particular examples of where are my alumni? And I, um, coincidentally, when I was doing this, Caroline, my colleague, came into my office and said, do you remember her? Like, um, I think I do. She's um, on the cover of Economia. Economia is one of the uh, finance... Um, related magazines, and she's now the Vice Deputy Minister of Shipping in, in Cyprus, Natasa Pelidis. Um, we've got um, Senior Manager at Global Tax in, in Brussels, uh, Milena. We've got partners in advisory firms, PwC, George Casamias. We've got uh, members of uh, the banking, board of directors of the banking sector, um, internal reporting, digital analysis at Hellenic Bank. We've got um, JP Morgan, Mr. Subah Haj, your student, what this says? Yes, indeed. Um, Mario Standalis, Bank of Cyprus, compliance, um, internal auditors, director of finance. Just to give you, an, in one slide, I tried to give you how broad potentials could be for you. Just in case you think, oh, is it going to be only this? No. It can be any of this and many, many more, of course. Okay? You see, also, we've got people who are starting in Cyprus, moving abroad. That's also a potential you should not um, you know, close. I think having some experience abroad is very, very useful. And I think, Andrea, I don't know whether you can um, yes, add well, on this. The truth is that even if you work for a small or a medium-sized company in the UK, it's probably much bigger than anything you'll work in. Uh, because of the market in, size. In so that, that's a fantastic experience. And uh, again, you bring all that together with you. There is a drawback when you work for a very, very big organization. By definition, you have to only specialize in one area. So there's benefits and drawbacks of, uh, of doing that, but definitely the, those six, seven years of experience working in very, very big companies uh, is something that was very, very useful. Okay, um, moving on. Just um, the new trends in the profession. Okay, now we have evolving technology. We've touched on this technology that will change the way we do things. That's why the syllabi have changed accordingly. The globalization of reporting, uh, the new forms of regulations. Now, starting off with regulations and governance, and I think Yanis can give us a bit more about how much do you feel that the um, regulations and the uh, changes in regulations have changed over the years that you've seen, and how has this affected um, Opportunities, challenges? Um, laws, regulations, I think uh, it, it was always like that. It, it's nothing new. Everything changes. Change, uh, I guess, means uh, becoming better. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the difference in the last couple of years is the time intervals uh, between each change that they are becoming shorter. Mm. 
and it's understandable because we are now, we are now talking about global economies. We are currently talking about uh, there is no such thing of um, doing something and having an impact only in your country as it was some years ago. Now it's international groups, global groups, a lot of companies all over the world interact together. So there is, it's, it's understandable and, it's, and uh, it's expected that there will be so many changes in the regulation. Now where that leads to our profession, uh, more opportunities, skills are changing. Uh, some years ago in Cyprus, it was better knowing a little bit of everything. Currently, it's becoming about being an expert on something. Mm. Uh, there are more opportunities, yes, technology. Technology is everywhere. Uh, we cannot stop technology. We don't want to stop technology. Um, I'm spending more time currently speaking with IT guys in my profession, rather than board of directors and CEOs. That's a change it because a change, yeah. now not many things can be done manually. Everything is online, the data is huge. Uh, IT guys, fantastic guys, very clever guys, don't know compliance. You need to find a way to explain them what they need to do or to implement it. So yes, there are changes, there are new opportunities, but uh, um, I think it's pretty clear that uh, our profession is evolving and uh, demand uh, will stay high. Even after the digital technologies and the, the artificial intelligence, because of other skills that um, Andrea has mentioned, like the fact that there still needs to be thought behind decisions yes. made. Problem solving skills, decision yes. making, these things, yeah. I don't think these things will go away very fast. And having an IT with the accounting uh, qualification also could be very useful because of all this that we've mentioned, that they will have to audit through the systems, they have to do the reporting um, through ITs. You know, we've got cloud computing, we've got data analysis, which is a new area, data yes. analysis and how it can be used in making big data into small, understandable data, being able to present them for management decision processing. Uh, and, and the good things about these, qualifica these professional qualifications is that they tend to incorporate in their syllabi uh, all these new developments. Exactly, and um, they made changes recently. Yes. You've, you've I was, I was discussing changes. before with yeah. uh, Mr. Andreas about the BS, business strategy, uh, which changed into business strategy and technology. Exactly, yes. yes. So um, they, they tend to focus on these new trends and the, um, uh, the new ways of auditing, for example, of, of doing things. Mm -hmm. There are chapters now in our syllabi um, that focus specifically on information strategy or on um, information technology Cyber or security. On big data, for yeah, example. And, yeah, and cybersecurity, we've seen yes. as well some changes there. Have you seen them at work, these things? Do you, do you use these things at work? Of course we do. Yeah. And uh, now in, at KPMG, we have um, a different department uh, that is specialized on, uh, internal, in, on the audit of the controls, mm -hmm. uh, of the IT controls of the okay. client. So we always cooperate with these guys. So more opportunities for further yeah. employment, yes. Um, the globalization, I think uh, Yannis has mentioned it, Andreas has mentioned it, you have mentioned it, I think everyone agrees it's not about Cyprus, it's not about, it's more about the global. And this brings also a need for further specializations like international taxation, like compliance with the European directives. Um, multi, multilingual, I think, is also, I think I've been to um, a conference recently and one thing that a speaker said there, one of the very good things you could do is learn yourself a language. It will help. It will have cross barriers as well. Being multilingual could also be. So alongside that, you know, don't restrict yourself only. To become successful, you will need your basis of a qualification. But then don't stop there. Yes. This, is, this is the message I want to say. If you want to grow and specialize and keep up to date, you have to keep your um, moving with education. <coughs> Now, I think we've, we've touched on this. I'm just going to move through this quicker. 
yes, we have to be tech-savvy thinkers. You have to be able to understand uh, the changes in IT and how you can work around them. You have to be very good communicators. Don't, you know, either written communication or verbal communication, take the opportunities, you know, just don't get scared and sit back and not be active um, in things. I mean, you've mentioned something, um, Katarina, earlier. Uh, you know, it could be boring. It could be boring if you just do things mechanically. If you take the challenges and take it a bit further uh, and use and become thinkers, then it can become something completely um, a different. And also, most companies now are service companies, so communication is key. You, Obviously. You, you're not working yeah. in factories anymore. You're, t you're dealing with people. You're dealing with people, yes. and communication is key exactly. in, in dealing with people. Be strategic thinkers. See the big picture. Try to simplify things and mm -hmm. put it down, narrate it down, and simplify it down. Um, and obviously, build strong networks. Don't um, underestimate what can a strong network do for you. Keep going to conferences, talk to people, learn about new things. Um, make sure you're up to date. I think one thing Andreas um, is saying as well, just sort of builds on everything. You know, keep understanding what's happening in the business outside. Um, do the reading. Um, I think you're a very big fan of The Economist, if I remember. Yes, I'm a big fan of The Economist, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's interesting how you can, reading through that, uh, that magazine, there's so many things that link to what we've learned and what we lived through. I actually used it in one of the seminars, just yeah. took one random article and just linking to the real world. It's, it's very, very interesting. And also talking about communication, and uh, the, the networks, you know, 20, 25 years ago, there was no Facebook, LinkedIn or anything. And I, and I remember um, when I was interviewing with, uh, who was a library at the time, actually it was a forensic accountant who interviewed me. And I asked him, uh, what piece of advice would you give me leaving from the London School of Economics to go into, into the industry? He said, take down the names and the numbers of all your students fellow students, because you'll find them somewhere in the, in the future. Of course, it's much easier to do it now, but the message, I think, is the same, that you need to build that network, which is so important. Keep your network. Yeah. Yeah, at least any of these which you think are more important in your role or something you would want to say as advice, which of areas where you think is um, something which you think really has to be developed by people, oh, all oh. five? All of these are important, yeah. but uh, I'm surprised that my fellow colleagues from the ICAW has missed the most important ah, thing. Ah, eh, la We are currently considered the gatekeepers of the economy. This is what they call us. Uh, Yes, we are everywhere. We are in banks, we are in uh, audit, we are in compliance, we are everywhere. But uh, there is a lot of expectation from the society, from the, uh, from the people, from the investors, from our profession. And all these are fantastic, but the thing that is missing, and I, I'm not trying to be romantic, is uh, Ethics and integrity. This my next has slide. become <laughs> uh, technical and ethical in the nucleus. Uh, there, yes. W well done, the ACCA. <laughs> <laughs> ACCA has uh, picked up on this e one. Yeah. Ethics and integrity has become um, number one in our profession. Sure. And uh, as much as regulation, laws, uh, circulars, whatever you can have. If someone does not have the ethics and the integrity developed, then the, it doesn't matter. It, it does not really matter having hundreds or thousands of regulations. And uh, this is something that uh, both the institute that I'm a member, I'm not only talking only about the ICAW, but also about ISPAC, the Cyprus regulator, they are concentrating in these areas as well to train their members, to give all the skills to their members, to be able to do the right thing. 
So it's, uh, it starts becoming a lot about being ethical. Just I, I would also it. agree with you, Yannis, yeah. that this is a, the cornerstone maybe of somebody's success today. And this is why we ended up with all, all, all this regulation about compliance and AML. And uh, the important thing to note about changes in the syllabus of, the, uh, of both the ACCA and the ACA is that in almost every subject, in every module now, we have a section ethics. about ethics. Yes. Uh, we have seen a lot in the international um, landscape uh, happening the last few years uh, relating to uh, tax evasion, and all sorts of financial crime that uh, we have all experienced in our careers and we all know from the economic news uh, that has led to this uh, necessity of having ethics and integrity as part of the syllabus that we teach students. And uh, I hope this is going to improve uh, our uh, standards and uh, will uh, make our a profession even better. Uh, I wanted also to add something about uh, uh, the changes that we have seen in, in, in the syllabus uh, relating to uh, globalization. It relates to the previous slide, uh, Georgia. We mentioned earlier that uh, we have to become strategic thinkers. Yeah. Uh, it's point four. Uh, we have seen also this strategic a, a thinking element becoming part of the core syllabus of uh, both ACC and ACA. That's why we have a case study paper, uh, which is the last paper of the ICAW, and another similar paper called Strategic Business Leader under the ACCA, which is also a case study paper, um, uh, becoming a very important uh, element of somebody's way of thinking and way of uh, exercising its uh, professional skills. Uh, I believe this is the result of globalization as well. Most of the companies are now global. They have uh, international activities. So if you don't have this strategic thinking, then you, you cannot go anywhere. It's uh, okay. an inevitable uh, ingredient of uh, becoming successful and uh, definitely if you want to become a leader and whatever, whatever you do with this uh, particular um, uh, career, with this uh, uh, qualification, eventually you, will, you have to act and become a strategic thinker and uh, you may end up in a leading position somewhere in an organization. So this is the, the meaning behind change uh, in, the, in the syllabus of, the, of these two qualifications. One extra thing I would like to add, we keep talking about ACA and ACA, and uh, we have focused our presentation today on these two qualifications. We mentioned earlier about some other qualifications about tax, internal audit, and uh, financial management, and uh, uh, some other possible uh, career routes. However, these two uh, prime qualifications can give you the opportunity to change your career to any of the other specializations we mentioned earlier. So, the internal audit or the taxation or the investment analyst or uh, compliance can become a subset of this main uh, program of studies, the accounting qualification. And through our seminars and workshops, um, I think you can get more specialization in the areas where you would like to, uh, you've mentioned. Indeed. Um, you know, become a compliance officer. It could be AML, it could be um, forensics, it could be data analysis. Well, our experience could definitely also, we know we've been studying this environment, so we have the skills to deal with it. We've got very good clients which um, <coughs> come to us, as Odyssey has mentioned earlier, to, to say, do you have anyone you can recommend us? 
so we can also act as a liaison between you guys and your new employers. Our lectures, obviously, and we always uh, give personal attention to anyone who goes into our office to give them what is best for them. Um, I think we've, uh, we've covered this. It's just um, so emphasizing what it is that we do, how we do it, and, of course, the fact that we keep on emphasizing on becoming better and better. It doesn't stop. All these sales doesn't stop. <laughs> Um, if, if, if anyone of else will of start culture. off stopping, he won't stop, trust me. And I think whatever we've achieved so far, a big cornerstone and a big uh, achiever behind it is um, the person that's sitting next to me. And of course, some of our clients there, I could have put much more than that, just putting some of our clients. Uh, just to finish off this, um, this presentation, just to let you know that in doing this presentation, I've used various sources from ACCA publications, ACA publications, uh, European commissions, all about the qualifications. Um, if anyone may be interested to get these reports electronically, I've got Vasily and Andri there, if you can raise your hands, girls, um, <laughs> who are holding inquiry forms. Just leave your uh, details there if you would be interested, and we'll send you all these reports electronically. Uh, for your further reference. And I think that uh, completes our session for today. We're open to any questions you have for any of us here. Uh, would you Andrea, like to Andrea, I know you speech? have a question. <laughs> no questions? <laughs> Sorry. I've always had this um, um, question. And I want you to expand a bit more on the difference between the ACA and the ACCA. You, you started on it, your year started on it, but you didn't expand very much, so I'd like to hear more about that. Okay. Well, the main, the, main, the main difference is the way you do your training. There is a much difference in the content of the syllabus. It's a different uh, approach. The one is more open access, the ACCA. Uh, the ACA is for people who have to be on a full-time employment and with a training contract with one of the approved training firms, like the big four firms and some other firms that have uh, been accredited and approved by the Institute of Chartered Accountants to train ACAs. The ACCA being more open access has become more international, and as a result, they have more than half a million students globally. The ACA is more uh, uh, restricted to uh, people who have actually got a job and then uh, have started their studies as ACAs. That is why we register students at Global Training after they have succeeded through, their inter through an interview uh, to get a job with one of the uh, approved employers. And it's the employers who refer the students to us. For the, this is also happening with uh, some ACCA students as well, because they can also go through the same route. But we have also many ACCA students who come to us directly and they register with us uh, when they come to, to college. Just to add on this, with ACCA you have more flexibility to uh, develop your own route. So, you know, take the courses as you wish in any combination you wish. While the way the ACA is structured is more denominated by the employers. You have to be doing these five courses in this restricted time period. So it's more about what Odisea said, the way it is delivered rather it's less than... Flexible, then. It's, it's less flexible less, then. It's a bit less flexible, the ACCA. The ACA is a bit less flexible. Probably, in the way it's done, at least, um, currently. Right. It doesn't more, mean it's less yes. flexible in general. It's just True. a bit more con confined. Plus, yeah. it's more competitive when it comes to get a job, because the employers right. have raised the standards and they get applications only from those students who are first class or 2-1 degree holders. That is a very competitive, let's say, um, route to follow, and the employers do the first screening mm -hmm. before 
they actually uh, send the students to us. So this is something that changes completely the approach that the ACAs follow uh, from the very beginning uh, to, to do the accounting qualification. Do employers see the, um, uh, a bachelor's degree in accounting as an additional um, positive factor in um, employing someone, or does it really make a difference? Because I know it provides exemptions for both the ACCA and the ACA, but how would an additional, for example, BSc in accounting um, enhance someone's CV? Mm -hmm. Would it? Well, for the accounting, well, first of all, I have to say that uh, nowadays the employers who recruit students to do the ACA, they approximately hire less than 40% or less than maybe 30% uh, who are uh, relevant degree holders, accounting or business uh, degree holders. They also want to hire uh, graduates from engineering, from sciences in general, and any other background that is not relevant to the accounting profession for the very simple reason that they want to um, benefit from the skills of those uh, graduates. Uh, after all, they will train them to become accountants anyway, so, I, so why do they need them to have studied accounting in the first place? Right. Uh, and don't forget that you may have people who did an engineering degree and they now work in the audit department of a big uh, international firm. They will be better to work as auditors uh, for uh, an engineering company, let's say, for. Uh, if you send an engineer to audit a, an engineering company, he's the most relevant to go there and actually understand what is going on. So we have this kind, plus we have people who come from sciences uh, with more analytical uh, skills, analytical mind, and uh, the ability to, uh, let's say, cope with problems which are not relevant to the finance and accounting in general. Now, there is a, an advantage when somebody did an accounting degree or a relevant degree for the employers, which is primarily... Accelerating the route. Yes. Uh, yes, it's primarily financial, uh, uh, let's say, advantage, because those students get a, get a number of exemptions, so it's easier for them to qualify in the sense that they, they will they will have to study for much less papers than those who are not relevant, and uh, it will cost the employer much less as well. So this is, there is a trade-off between the two, but I believe there is a very good balance the way employers hire both ACCAs and ACAs, uh, which is the reason why we have um, uh, trainees from all different disciplines studying to become accountants. That's, that's very interesting. I have another question, sorry. <laughs> so I think the question in everyone's mind is, I, I mean, you showed some very interesting salary figures before. And uh, the fact that you're telling A bit us louder, now, please. We can feel right. Better. Now, um, uh, <laughs> you, you showed us some very interesting salary figures in the market. You're saying that it's a profession that is in high demand still, mm -hmm. uh, that the market is not oversaturated. Um, and that it is actually advisable and it's uh, seen favorably by employers if you come from a different industry. So uh, a career change looks like is, it's, is very uh, feasible for anyone at any stage of their life. So if someone is interested in switching careers, going from, let's say, engineering or science or drama or literature to uh, accounting and accountancy and audit, how do they start? How do they take the first step? You want to answer this? How, how do they take the first step? I think they will have to first um, uh, go, it has to go through the employers. They have to, if I'm looking at someone 
who is interested to go into the big four firms. They will have to do their applications. And in fact, I have to admit, it's more the bigger companies, I don't know if you agree with me, that um, tend to want more of this balance than the smaller companies where they, they may tend to want more um, people with accounting background, perhaps also to give more some balance about uh, the financial incentives and all the rest without, of course, discriminating between the two too much. But I think the steps are um, go do your application. Most of these companies accept applications online. So go to do your applications online. Uh, wait for the interview and the, come to, to come through. In the meantime, should you be interested to start off as an independent student, i.e. without having an employer, you can do so, whether you're doing a certified or your chartered accountancy. Come to us and let's give you exactly what it means, uh, how long it will take. And one thing that we've also noticed, if there is someone that has a completely irrelevant background, an employer may, for whatever reason, feel reluctant to employ at first, but then, if that person proves him or herself that I've, I can go through this, um, I can have passed my first three papers, I have passed my four, first four papers, surely it's an additional benefit for them to seek out that they are committed to what they want. And it's not just, you know, there was nothing else I could think of and that's why I wanted to do that. But I really am committed and want to go into this new career. Georgia, can I add Please. something to that? Andreas, I will be expecting you at my office on Monday To morning. register for the chartered account. To I have a, mar I have a marketing exactly background. how <laughs> you can change your career. <laughs> no problem. It's never too late. <laughs> I know. Well, if there are no more questions, I believe we have to conclude. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you. It's a pity we don't have students and parents here, maybe more students and parents who are uh, uh, interested to know more about uh, uh, the accounting profession in general and the way we have managed to link academia with uh, profession and with training and the value of uh, having people uh, under such training uh, schemes. Uh, I, 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 I want to confirm that um, uh, we have started, this is, as I said earlier, back in 1991, and I have never regretted myself uh, being uh, so close to the industry, to the accounting profession as an educator. Uh, we have uh, uh, managed to cultivate, I would say, the career of many young Cypriots and Greek uh, students and many others from the rest of the world. I just mentioned the Cypriots and the Greeks because they are the majority of students that have trained with us. But uh, we have now graduates who work in top uh, international firms from uh, New York to London, Moscow, Hong Kong, uh, Bucharest, uh, all the countries of the Eastern Bloc, Greece, Cyprus, everywhere, in Dubai. And uh, one of the uh, major advantages of uh, keeping contact with these students is that uh, we are so happy and proud to know how successful they are in their career. Uh, I advise uh, all of you not to uh, miss the chance of advising somebody to come to, to see us, to talk to them. And uh, I'm sure they will all be very grateful to you uh, that uh, if they ever choose to do this career path, to follow this career path, they will never regret, never regret it. So that's all from me. I'd Should like you? to thank Andreas, Yannis, and Katerina for sharing um, Thank you too. their experiences and um, showing the people about how their own personal story uh, and how the qualification has assisted in that and also on how you know, the profession is moving forward uh, and what potentially would be the advice. Thank you very much for your time, you ladies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Always a Thank pleasure. You.